Hello, my name is Meryl van der Merwe and I'm glad you're joining me today for this session on STEM contests. Before I begin to talk about contests, let me just tell you a little about myself. Originally, I'm from South Africa. I'm sure you could tell from the accent that I'm not American. We moved to America with our four children when they were between the ages of three and 12 and at that stage decided to homeschool. I quickly discovered that my children needed a little bit of extra motivation. Just working for mom wasn't always a huge success. So I started looking for contests. We found contests both that could enter as individuals and also some as teams. By this stage, we had joined a fantastic local homeschool group, which I'm still involved with, even though I'm now an empty nester. And so the team contests were usually done through our homeschool group. My children have all left home now and gone on to college and the workplace but I am still involved in our local homeschool group. I still uh, coach various teams there. I teach in our local co-op and I run an online uh, school called um, Funder Funder Academy especially for homeschoolers. In addition you can also listen to me if you enjoy this um, and you want to hear more of what I can share, I do have a podcast, Homeschooling with Technology, that you can find wherever you find your podcasts. Now, let's get on to learning about STEM contests. So first of all, why should you even consider getting your kids involved in STEM contests? Well, the very first reason I would suggest is simply because of the hands-on learning that often occurs. My husband, as he's watched our children over the years take part in some of these contests, kept remarking that he wished these had been around when he was at school because he sees how much this really has impacted my own children's understanding of science and technology and increased their love of these subjects. Secondly, I would say do it because it does look good to colleges and on scholarship applications if your children do well. And there is no reason why they shouldn't do well if they um, continue and just keep on trying. Thirdly, there is money to be won in some of these. Not all of them. Sometimes you end up paying more money than you get out of it. But some of them do have cash prizes and um, my own children and many that I know in our area have made some nice money over the years. Uh, fourthly, I would suggest that, particularly for the team ones, as homeschoolers, this was a really fun way to socialize and be learning something new at the same time. It also will teach your kids teamwork. Um, again, as homeschoolers, they get less opportunity to um, work as a team unless you have a huge family and they have to learn to live with each other. But it is good for them to be with their peers and working together on group projects. And the final thought is that you never know what they may discover about their own interests as they take part in contests. I know one of the students on one of my teams, which I'll be talking about um, shortly, discovered her love of ecology and the environment. And so now she just started this year um, studying for a degree in environmental science. And if she hadn't done these contests, who knows if she'd ever have realized that this was something she loved. Now, um, there is a handout that you will be able to get that will cover not only the ones that I'm going to talk about now, but many other, not all of them again, but many other math and science and uh, technology contests. So you can go and explore some more of them yourselves and the ones that I, I will be mentioning, you will be able to find on that as well. Some of these do have a cost. Um, and I'm not going to give specifics because that changes over the years. A few of them are free. Some of them, unfortunately, you have to sort of buy 10 at a time. So this is something that some of them may not be really feasible for you if you don't have any homeschool group that you're part of or co-op that you attend. Um, but perhaps you know enough people in the local area that you could still enter. So you're just going to have to sort of go away and have a look. You will see on the handout that you get that um, we do mark whether they're an individual event or a team event and whether it does have a cost involved. Let's get started. So my absolute favorite of all these contests, and I must just start off, I forgot to tell you, I am not a, uh, a STEM person at all, actually. I studied English and German at university, at the University of Cape Town. 
but somehow STEM has always drawn me in. I, I did become a computer programmer. So from that side of things, there is that bit of tech on my side. But uh, the rest of it I learned as I went along. So do not be daunted. I do not have any science degree. In fact, the only science subject I ever covered at university was computer science. In South Africa, you do not have to do gen eds. And so I did not study any science at all when I was at college. So you could, if I can do it, I promise you, you can do it too. Back now to my favorite contest. For the past 12 or so years, it's been a long time now, I've been head coach of the Cedar Springs Science Olympiad homeschool team. Now, Science Olympiad is a team event. You can have up to 15 students on a team um, and the there are three different age brackets. In fact, the, the younger one, I'm not sure if there's even a limit. There is an elementary, then there's middle school and there's high school. And they call them A, B and C divisions. Um, not all areas have elementary science Olympiads. They are very much sort of like a fun science uh, day contest. Um, our area has only had one for the last few years, but our children have really enjoyed doing it. And our area is from third through fifth grade. I'm not sure if it's exactly the same in all different places. Our kids don't tend to do a lot of uh, pre-studying and they go in and just have fun and win some medals. Middle and high school, though, are very serious competitions. You start off at your local regional level. Um, as I said, up to 15 students. Up to uh, eighth grade will be, uh, in fact, up to ninth grade will be your B division teams, and then ninth through twelfth will be your C division teams. So you can decide where you want your ninth graders to fall, whether they'll be in B division or in C division. Once you have got enough children for a team, and you do not need fifteen, I know of one homeschool team in I think it's Florida this year, who is competing with seven. We started with 10 in our first year, and we just had one B division team. We are now, this current season, we have three middle school teams and a high school team. The different events that you can get for Science Olympiad can cover lab events, um, building events, study events, and sometimes a combo of those. Which means that this is a great competition for all types of children, including those with learning disabilities, because they could be doing the hands-on building events instead of having to do ones that require a lot of studying and writing. The building events you build beforehand. Depending on the year, as I said, they, they have 23 different events, but they keep changing exactly which ones you have in any given year. They could be building a bridge or a tower, some kind of a car. This current year, it's mousetrap powered. Um, they might be building a trebuchet, a robot, a... Um, We've had a bungee cord drop thingy that I remember one year. Then there's always something that flies, a helicopter, a glider. And as I said, just they keep changing it to keep us coaches on our toes. But the children will build these at home according to specifications. And then they go and actually test them on the day. Um, if they're flying, they'll be seeing how long they can stay in the air. The car ones will be told on the day exactly the distance that they have to run their car. So it'll be one of those things that the students have to know how to adjust their car to get it to break at exactly the right time. Um, then you've got uh, the study events. Those will be things like anatomy, meteorology. Uh, this year we also have um, circuits. In fact, circuits is one of the combined ones. They'll both need to know everything about electricity and they will actually have to build some kind of circuit. Um, thermodynamics is again one like that. Then we have um, dynamic planet, always something to do with earth science. This year it is glaciers. We have fossils, which they'll have to be able to ID um, some fossils and answer questions about them. There is road scholar, which is a uh, map skills event. This is one that's great for children who might not think they are real scientists because I coach that one and you don't have to know a huge amount about science to be able to do it. Game On is currently an event and it's programming in Scratch. Experimental Design, they design an experiment and literally do it there. Then there's also Disease Detectives, 
Um, there is genetics this year, heredity for the younger ones and designer genes for the high school division. High schoolers have things like um, Fermi, which is guessing how big certain things are. They've got cryptology for the first time, cryptography for the first time this year called Codebusters. They have geologic mapping. There is um, then there's also crime busters for the younger ones, forensics for the older ones. So you can see there really are events for just about every interest, even if they're not very into science. You really need to start working on this about September or October each year. Um, there are rules and there are some resources that you can buy, but pretty much anything that will go within the rules the kids have to study. So it is very challenging, which is great, um, which is another reason why you should do contests is to challenge your kids. Let them see that they can do things they didn't think they could. Um, there is a homeschool face. There's a Facebook group for homeschool coaches. So if you do decide that you've got enough students in your area who would love to do Science Olympiad, um, make sure you get in contact with me and so that I can get you added to that group. The coaches in there are very helpful. There are now homeschool teams in many states. And so it's, it's open to homeschoolers, though not extremely friendly to homeschoolers. They do have a rule that at, um, at least at national level and most uh, um, states also at state level, you can only take two counties. So if you're a very spread out state that makes it hard, even for us, I come from a, an urban area, but we have many counties that touch us. So we always have more children in our team than just come from two counties. But um, our state allows any number of counties at the regional level, and then we just have to get down to two counties for state. Apart from the actual state contest, which is just one one day, and each student goes in and for 50 minutes either um, takes their written test or their hands-on lab event um, and also test the building devices. They're also what um, is known as invitationals, which is kind of like a scrimmage, but for, um, for an academic competition. Um, we go to a couple of different invitationals in our area. So we travel, the children like that. We stay overnight at a hotel and then go and compete all day. And these are just friendly competitions run at local schools. Generally, each team has to run an event and will give your children a way to get to know a little bit more about Science Olympiad and also help prepare them for the regional. And it means that they're not just literally doing everything just for one, once off one day. So at the competition, um, you the, the students go in in pairs and some of the events you like to take cheat sheets some of them you could take an entire binder sometimes you can't take anything with you when you they will finish taking the test you obviously sit around waiting for your award ceremony students get awards per each event so they can win a gold silver bronze and sometimes there are ribbons for further places on each event and then together you place as a team as a team if you do well enough in your regional, depending on how many move forward, you could move forward onto state. And then in the states, either one or two teams, depending on how many Science Olympia teams are in the state, can move on to nationals. And you might think it would be a pipe dream to ever imagine nationals. Well, when we started, I didn't even expect us to make state many times. But in fact, for our middle school team, it was only one year, the very first one, that we did not make state. After that, we carried on and made state every year, and our high school teams have always been making state as well. But in fact, our middle school teams have three times now won the Tennessee State Tournament and represented Tennessee at the national tournament, which was an amazing experience. So dream big. Let your kids dream big. They really can do it. Um, along the way, apart from all the stresses of building events not working as they should do and various other things like that. Um, our children have just learned an amazing amount and we've had so much fun. And I know a lot of more about science um, being their, their coach. And you, as I said, you don't have to know anything about these subjects because I don't. Um, I've learned with the kids and it's good for the children to actually see you not always knowing everything and having to Google and search and together figure it out. And as you can tell, it really hasn't impacted our team that I don't know that much. I do now, by the way, have a lot of um, co-coaches. I do not run the whole thing by myself. We've grown far too big. And so I have a wonderful team of administrators and coaches who help with the students. And that is why we have managed to be so successful. 
Now let's move on to another contest. Nat is also a team contest, but a slightly smaller team, Science Bowl. This is for middle and high school, and it is usually free to enter, as far as I know. And some states also have an Ocean Bowl. Um, I think you pretty much got to be one of the states that's on the uh, coast. Um, and I think it is very similar to Science Bowl from what I've heard, though we haven't had experience. Science Bowl, you have teams of four, and I think you can have one alternate. And it is a buzzer competition. So literally the children will sit and face off with another team. Questions will be read aloud, and they will then buzz in to actually receive, um, to, get the, to get acknowledged, and then to answer the question. And you score like that. And if you get it correct, you get a, um, a second question. There are specific categories, but it can cover anything in science. Um, so this does favor students that have a general love of science and um, just enjoy reading and learning about it. But the, you can also coach them to actually do better. Now, I used to be the coach of our team and we never did particularly well, but we now have a mom who actually knows something about science and that has been a whole lot more successful. And in fact, um, our high school team, uh, I think it was three years ago, won the Tennessee um, Science Bowl State Tournament and they competed at nationals. And this year, our middle school team has just come second, so they shouldn't have gone to nationals. However, the first place team was a school team and the school has testing that week and has decided that they don't want their children to miss the testing. So yes, believe it or not, they are preventing their children from an amazing experience to do testing and ours get to go and have it instead. So another reason to be grateful to homeschool and be able to control one's destiny a little more. The next contest is um, one that you possibly know more about and that's um, First Lego League Robotics. My um, my younger, my sons, he competed for two years on a team and they actually came second in Tennessee once, but a number of our Science Olympia students were on a team that actually did win one year and go on to nationals. So again, I do know a team of local homeschoolers who have competed at, at nationals in this event. Now for um, the Lego Robotics, and I also know this from a more practical point of view because I decided to coach, and not a homeschool, but an inner city team, and um, with one of my uh, homeschool mom friends, and we managed to help these children to get as far as state, and they even won a trophy for the teamwork section. So here you have a team of up to 10 students, um, and you get shipped, again, this one is a paying one you have to pay for, you get shipped a big kit, so you need a, a, a board to build everything on and a big enough space to do it. The students then have to start off and just build out their game board, which comes with specifications as exactly how each piece has to be built using Legos. Then they need to build a robot that will do the various tasks assigned for that year's competition. Um, again, you will have to actually have a robot kit. Um, they, you can buy them, um, I think, at a discount when you actually sign up to do First Lego League. It's been a while now, so I can't remember that exactly. But these are. Um, this will be obviously a robot that you can program, so it will teach your kids some programming skills too. Now, although I am a programmer, I have never learned the Lego programming language. Um, Lego League is very big about the fact that the children must do it all themselves and so I figured that was a good way to start and let them be sure to figure out the coding. Um, I could come and give them just a general idea as to when they were doing something wrong because obviously I'm a programmer but the children were quite capable of teaching themselves everything they needed to know. They have to get this the robot to move around the various obstacles which they've, they've um, built according to specs and as I say, they have to pick up things, move things, do whatever is required to get different points. Then again, they also have to, there's always a theme, and they have to research this theme. It's always something related to STEM um, or how STEM affects the world. So I know they've had things like pollution. Um, we had the interaction between animals and humans the one year that I did it. And we also did um, recycling was one year. So they go and they hone in on a specific topic within that and they then decide what they want to research and present. So this is one that teaches them research skills because they have to go away and, and figure that out. Um, 
and just get the information. They need to um, try and interview some experts. They could either do this on the computer, uh, just by Skyping in, or maybe meet somebody local. We did bees the one year, and uh, we went to a local beekeeper, and he told us all about it. And we also went to a nursery to learn about plants and bees and their interaction. The students have to present this on a trifold board. So again, another set of skills involved. And on the day at competition, they do have to do a little skit to present what they have learned from their topic. So yet another skill involved. Um, they also do need to talk about the robot design and at the competition, they obviously have to run the robot and it will get as many points as it does the different tasks. So this is a very multifaceted competition. Again, a good one for a student that might not think they're very um, STEM oriented because they could perhaps be working more on the research side of things. Um, and the more techie ones can be doing the robot building and the, uh, the robot programming. Um, this contest is for around about fourth through ninth graders, actually an age based and you can go on their website to see the exact cutoff dates. Um, and after that, they move on to first robotics. Unfortunately, the robotics that they do at that point is really expensive. And it's obviously a little harder for homeschoolers to get a grant. But I know many homeschoolers who've actually been part of school teams because they, they can. You don't have to just be um, um, just a pure homeschool team, but you can have a team that's formed in any way at all. And so our local team schools are quite often looking for more kids to join their teams and they will recruit from the homeschool environment. So look out for that as well for your children. Another science contest that um, my older son took part in was Explorer Vision. He did this just as a senior. So this isn't a contest I'm as familiar with. Um, it was a group project um, where you go and research and uh, cast a vision for where you think technology could be moving in the future. They need a mentor. We found somebody local um, who worked with them. And uh, here again, you compete. You just send everything in. You don't really have to, uh, um, you don't go, go anywhere. It's just one you do all online, but you send it all in. And then if you do well enough, you move on to the next level. But the final science one that I want to talk to you about today is um, uh, science fairs. Now, local science fairs are, as I say, local, and you're just going to need to search to find what your local science fair is. Here you pick a topic, um, and these are, I think they start fairly young and go up to high school. And you then, um, this, your child goes away and has to collect data and create a presentation. And I'm just going to read you my, um, my nephew did it, and I've got my sister-in-law to just tell me why she liked it and what she thinks her son gained from it. And she said, the benefits include planning a long-term pro project, especially if plants are involved, using the scientific method, learning from mistakes, interpreting results, making graphs. And um, she said one of the big parts of it was actually creating the, the trifold board, the display, which again brings in not just STEM uh, um, techniques, but you also have to just have a bit of art and creativity and everything else. So it's where STEM becomes STEAM, adding the A for the arts in there. Um, so if you don't, if you can't find a local one or the local one's time zone fit, there is another option and that is the Google Science Fair. Again, just everything is online and um, I think Google also has it progressing through different levels from local all the way um, up to a national level. Let's now move on to math contests. The one that my children all participated in was the American Math Contest, AMC for short. There is an AMC 8, 10 and 12 and each of those denotes the oldest um, grade that you can do it in. So you can do AMC 8 until 8th grade. Um, my youngest one actually started in third grade. She didn't do particularly well that year, but the benefits of starting young is that they start to get to understand the type of questions are asked and there's really no pressure to do well when you're in third grade because you know you're not going to be able to do a lot of the math. Um, it, uh, it is multiple choice. Um, thinking yes it is multiple choice yes it's multiple choice and they can guess so she did better than she should have because she guessed well 
Um, the best students do go on to the honor roll and if they do really well I'll even be invited to do AMC 10 and likewise the AMC 10 and 12 if they do really well will be invited on to the international level. In our homeschool group we do it as a homeschool group because you have to buy bundles of 10. In the, the um, AMC 8 we've had a number of students who've actually made the honor roll or younger ones have got a merit badge so if they're younger than sixth grade and they reach a certain level and that level differs from year to year it's pretty much on a curve um, and so usually there's 25 questions and usually the honor roll is around about 19 or 20 to make that and a little lower to make the merit one so these are a fairly hard math questions there are always a few easy ones that every child should be able to get I'd really test your does your child understand math so if you think you've got a child who's good at math this is good for them to try um, we changed curriculum as a result of both um, not managing so well on the high school AMC and uh, just the ACT because different curriculums do prepare one better for the harder math I also have a session on math clubs and that was another thing which I used to actually help prepare my youngest daughter for the math contests um, the AMC contests do have plenty of practice problems from previous ones so your child can practice it so they don't go in surprised and you do have to find a moderator who does not have a child in the contest to run it so it's a little trickier to do as homeschoolers but there is another option you could also look for a local school who's offering it and they will generally let you go in and take the test there and that's what a number of our high school students have done in years and we haven't had enough students to um, make it affordable for us to order all the tests also look for local math contests our local uh, community college and also our local state university both offer contests and our children have been pretty successful in actually taking part in those so see what your area has and whether they'll allow homeschoolers they probably will um, then the other math contest math counts uh, we've just had a middle school team again not coached by me but the two coaches did a fabulous job it's a team of four students and then you can uh, add extra students on as um, in, as just going in as individuals they have speed rounds they have rounds with no calculators they have ones with calculators they have ones that do as individuals they do have ones that they do together as a team and our students managed to um, place third I think it was third in the state in um, in the regional and so um, they don't move on to state as a team but one of our students placed third overall and so he moves on in the individual category he can get to compete it is one of those that allows both team and individuals to move on so he's going to carry on and compete at state um, later this uh, this spring so um, it's another good one to have a look at then the purple comet math contest is one that we haven't done recently as a homeschool group but we did when my short my boys were around and i think my with my youngest daughter too it is free and it's online and you have a sort of a window of about a week or so that the students can take part in it though they have to sit down and do it all in a I think it's a three hour stretch but you can pick your time to make make it work there's also a limit to the number of students on the team i can't remember exactly how many now but basically what happens is from when you hit go start they they will sign on and they get a number of problems which they can do in any or any order they can work together they can each work on different ones however it makes most sense for them to do it and they just submit as many answers as they can get this is not multiple choice they really have to try and figure out the answers um, I also had a lot of fun doing it there was also a lot of rolling around on the ground and eating and drinking um, not that much success but it was still it stretched them and they always did at least get some correct then let me finish off by talking about a couple of programming contests again we haven't done this recently as a group though maybe I should bring it back uh, I just got to the point where I don't I struggle to split myself in too many directions but the ACSL um, is the American Computer Science League um, I think that's correct uh, and it is has different levels for children to actually compete uh, in programming now as the levels go up the actual questions change somewhat but we never got beyond the sort of lower levels um, 
and those ones they get some binary that they have to uh, figure out if they have to know how to add and, and subtract binary multiply just to convert binary and hex um, they need to know just generally how computer algorithms work they need to be able to take a small piece of code and work out what the result would be um, they don't have to write their own code, I don't think, for the lower levels. I know the higher levels do actually write code as well. Um, the team can be, you can register for any size, either a three-person or a five-person team, but you can have more children competing per division. You just, the best three or the best five become your team and place accordingly. Um, it does cost, so again, you need to have a reasonable number of students to make it affordable. And you'll probably, unless children know this, need to actually do some preparation. So um, alongside the math club I used to run, I used to run a computer club too. And we would actually, I would actually prepare them for these questions. Um, and we'd actually spend some time. So again, you would need probably a parent who has some knowledge of computer science to be able to help them. Then there is a um, the PICO CTF hacking contest. CTF is capture the flag. But this is not the kind of flag where they run around and one team has hidden it and the other team has to find it, but it is similar. This time the flag though is hidden behind uh, a lot of levels uh, inside a computer, inside a server somewhere hidden. And they have to hack in to find it. So it's cyber security, but this is where the students have to understand what hackers do, I guess. Um, they work in teams and ours have never really done it in the same location because they it's normally done over about 10 days. So ours just communicate via email or text or whatever and try to work together to solve it. And as soon as one student has solved a problem, they all get to move on. So it's kind of like um, a race in the fact that you start at the beginning and you have to solve a problem to move to the next one. They, they do have old ones open on the site and so I've played around a bit and got... A certain level in but not all that far none of our teams have ever actually managed to capture the flag but you score points as you go along so you can also see how you're doing comparative to other teams and it's, it's just fun I, I think if this had been around when I'd been a kid um, I would absolutely have spent hours and hours doing it whenever the contest came there are other ones too but this is the 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 best and sort of unknown and I think it was perhaps the first one and they've been going for quite a long time so you can take a look at that one and if your children like uh, programming games if they know scratch or unity or any other game programming anything else to program games in scholastic art and writing awards believe it or not actually has a category for video game design Students can just actually design it without creating the game, but if they can, they can also create it in any of those different languages that they wish to. I don't know anyone who's done that yet, but I just wanted to add that one in specifically because I think it's pretty cool and I hope that I'll convince one of my um, students sometime in the near future to actually try that out. And finally, in conclusion, I just want to say that um, Funder Funder Academy, um, which I run, does also hold contests for students. And one of them that we ran for the first time last Christmas was a scratch coding contest. I think we'll probably run it again over the summer and um, possibly adding other STEM related contests as we go along. So if you look at your handout, you will actually find a link to our contest page and you can even sign up for us to let you know when we have a new contest coming out. I hope this has encouraged you to try some contests with your children. Feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at Merrill at FunderFunder, F-U-N-D-A, F-U-N-D-A dot com or find me on any of our social media accounts. And there will be information also in the uh, um, on the handout as to how you can find me online. Go and try this out with your children. I think you will be astounded as to how much you all enjoy it and how much they learn. Thank you.